Hello and welcome to the Drivers Hub. Today is a different day, but it's a very special one. I have the honor to be graced with Mr. Kapil Shelke. He is the founder and CEO of Talk Motors. And not only are we going to be taking out a couple of Talk Motors bikes out, we're also going to be indulging in some juicy conversation. So let's go and talk all about Talk Motors today. Let me give you a quick history lesson about Talk Motors. Started by Mr. Shailke back in 2006, he was a passionate man with regards to cars and bikes. He wanted to stamp his legacy in the history books and in his college days was inspired by the Isle of Man TT. Thus, Mr. Kapil developed the T1X, an electric motorcycle and competed in the historic race in 2009 and bagged a podium third place finish. He finished first place the year after with the T2X in the TTX GP and after gathering knowledge and experience in the years to come, Talk Motors unveiled the T6X concept, which was the embodiment of the years of hard work. Today, we are riding the Kratos R, Talk's road-going electric motorcycle, which promises to bring the fun to the EV motorcycle space. The Kratos R has a top speed of 100 km per hour, makes an astonishing 38 Nm of peak torque comes with three different riding modes and has a 4 kilowatt hour battery. You can definitely feel the innate sportiness in the Kratos in the way it rides and this is thanks to the rich heritage of Talk Motors in the racing world. After our lovely morning ride, we decided to head back to the Talk HQ where we would be having breakfast with Mr. Kapil and indulging in his story up and until now. Thank you so much for... No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. No, definitely, sir. Uh, now, talk has been here for quite a while, but uh, production has just started ramping up and I wanted to know, given the response that you've gotten from the entire country for the Kratos R and now the X is also coming out, um, what is the near future, maybe two years ahead of talk motors? Where would you want to be as a company and what is the product lineup coming up for this near future? So I think the product lineup, we uh, we are already outperforming ourselves. We are already introducing one new product in, let's say we've launched last year. Yeah. And we were already sort of getting ahead of, because we are excited to build more, so we are building the X and I think that is going to be uh, there for a year or two. So we're not going to change too much because we have to stabilize production. There's a lot of other work that you have to do. Uh, I think from the software point of view, there, there's a lot of development that has to go on. Uh, I think for the company, I have to uh, be candid. I want to be pan in there. I want to be, wherever you want to see us, we should be there. Wherever there is a customer, we have to be present. At least that is the basic goal that a company should have. Ki, Let's say, let's say we should be in two years, let's say 600 stores. I'm just, I'm giving you a large number. It's a big number for a startup like us or any startup to be in 600 stores. But that's the idea. Ki be the, is there a customer, uh, let's say in Sangli? Are we, we have, do, do we have a store in Sangli? That's the basic point. So you've got aspirations for your company. Hmm. And uh, me being a young guy, I've always, uh, taken inspiration from people that have always made it at a young age like you and uh, what would be your advice to kids like me or younger people like me that just want to yeah thank you for making yeah. themselves thank you for making me look uh, older but yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i think uh, with the information that you have right now it always almost feels that i can do this i can do this i can do this i can do everything I think the problem is uh, you are in you should be in organized chaos. So current problem is you were earlier you were in organized let's say you wanted to be organized you focused and all that but can't you can't be in this state uh, in this era. So you should have an organized chaos. I know there is chaos in your head that you, I will also do but you still have to figure out and say these are four or five problems that I will solve and I will keep solving them 
till i become best at let's say now you can say today that i will just shoot content i'll also edit the content and matlab i'm just giving uh, my younger brothers or my cousin brothers are you, let's say your age and they have this dilemma na ki main ye bhi karunga kya main ye bhi karunga aur sab karunga sab karo but get that in in a format where you know i am super excited about this stuff daily if you're excited then you are let's say you will figure out a solution and uh, also now talking about aspirations we like i of course as a child had something to look up to like cars or bikes did you have one of those aspirational machines as a child growing up or was it a car was it a bike i think the lamborghini countach and I, i don't know so these are some machines i remember clearly on my wall uh, and i was very fascinated with the guys who used to uh, be at the f1 pit crew let's say the guys who used to tighten the tires the amount of work that they do for that one second is yeah. humongous and and it has to, so i was very fascinated by that ki mujhe wo banna hai the tire uh, the tire guy or the fuel guy or the guy who's on saying go 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 i think i was very fascinated by that concept ki these guys have performed something at a level that nobody else can do as a team or matlab they are not they are better than football guys i let's say <laughs> so uh, so i think that's that's why i was, was uh, that's why that's what i'm in my head so i think racing for me was not mostly track was also sort of engineering kiske piche kya hota hai ha experience wo pit crew pe pit wall pe baith ke wo what is he telling what's happening so i think that that actually excites me more what are the chances of talk motorsport uh, happening or talk motors going back into motorsport where it started so we haven't stopped racing but we are not publishing it too much so it's a we do build a dirt bike and it usually on weekends you'll see my uh, test guys or my proto guys actually taking it out i am not let's say involved fully in it uh, it's not it's almost as you rightly said earlier skunk works team hai jo apna kaam karte rehta hai so i don't stop racing uh, But yeah, long form racing. Let's say uh, racing that you actually go on, like a Isle of Man TT or something like that. So I build the company for this. Ki main ek din jaun. So I don't know where that time. So but I think I don't see uh, electric motorcycle racing as let's say open category. It's a close category. Yeah. Ducati is building for Ducati. Energy is building. So it's like a one-make championship that everybody is trying to build. I think it should open up for uh, people like us who can actually build and go and race. Even if it we are slowest on the track, it doesn't matter. But that's how racing is. You yeah. you you partner. You meet uh, meet great engineers at a race track. So you started off as an engineer. Uh, you have a, a degree in carbon composites. Yeah, yeah no i won't say degree but let's say i have done a course on carbon carbon course carbon. on carbon composition and you've always been part of that technical background how does it feel to transition into a ceo businessman exec yeah. is it uh, so the idea like going back or so i think uh, football needs a captain uh, so you need a captain here in simple terms you need somebody to sort of take all the right or wrong decisions blame and whatever you have to shoulder that responsibility that is in the let's say in the financial world is called the ceo uh, yeah uh, but i think uh, mostly it's a team effort it's not uh, but somebody has to sort of lead the ground and say let's do this let's let's take that decision i'll take the uh, win or we'll take the win or we'll take the uh, ground so i think but i don't think it like that i think it we are problem solvers engineers to humko problem de do hum solve kar denge so i think like that so even if it is a financial problem it is not too tough it should not be too tough for an engineer to solve it technically you have problem solvers in your head you, you have thought like that ki this is a problem there is a solution there is a theorem there is somebody who can you so you can refer something you can learn faster i think uh, that is true for everybody else also Uh, but uh, i think that is how i look at uh, running a company so the transition has been pretty smooth yeah yeah you See. can no no i think uh, it's hard it's hard to let's say learn finance and learn everything and learn uh, st- stuff that you don't know yeah but i think my team is great so i don't have to worry about too much and they'll give me a genuine input and the group is growing 
GoPro is. Uh, yes. <laughs> Last question. Uh, this is kind of a personal one because I was uh, stalking you last night a little bit, and I was going through LinkedIn, and uh, I found this image. The uh, we will put it for the people outside. Uh, it's yeah. This. This is the T2X. Yeah. Two hundred and you've described it as two hundred and ten kgs, eleven kilowatt hours, mm. around eighty bhp, mm. two hundred and ten kilometers an hour. Uh, this is something that makes me feel some type of way because I would like this kind of performance. Hey, very fast. I like that. So, I, so, so, the, the, so, so what's happening today is everybody was building a little faster motorcycle, saying, "Oh, I'm done it, done. I'm building a fast electric motorcycle," and I feel like, okay. So that's why I put the post out and saying sorry. Oh, this was a dig at someone. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I feel that people should know that Torque has done something like that. People might only remember what we do today. Might because we are advertising for it. We are actually pushing that content out. But there is a Torque beyond uh, the Kratos uh, and, and the R and the X. So this is what. I could bring the technology to the people like us who can actually buy it, afford it. This was racing; nobody could afford it. We could just one make. It's only one motorcycle. So I think uh, that perspective I just wanted to bring out and say, "Arey, ye to mujhe yad hai ki maine bhi aisa kuch banaya tha," and it was fast. So I think, yeah. So how how long do you think it's going to be for us to get infrastructure like this? Uh, to our streets where we also get to have bikes that are 80 bhp electric bikes that we not long out. actually so the power here is uh, power in electric world is almost exponential in terms of you don't have to spend too much money to get too much power earlier you had to build an engine right you had to redesign and everything here is almost software so if you can do a little bit more work you uh, so thoda exponential ho jayega so you can actually build fast faster motorcycles at very low cost let's say affordable cost i wouldn't say low cost but affordable that you can ride for so i think fundamentally that will change the way we look at electric motorcycles okay and so we are not far away from what we so this was already done this is already done just the the price point that you bring a motorcycle like this doesn't help it might only be 100 motorcycles sold a month so true So for that, I think uh, it's doesn't make too much business sense right now. Uh, yeah. Because there are a lot of people. See, solve a problem for a million people, then you you might have a business. Might. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, so that's the fundamental. And then you're in India, where average salary is at let's say twenty five thousand rupees, and he doesn't have that. He wants an electric tech. He wants a technology that is actually affordable for him. So technology does not mean India. You have the best technology, but very expensive. It doesn't matter if uh, if it's an aeroplane. I don't care. <laughs> Normalize the technology Haan. first, and then brand build so, up. Haan. It's hard to build in India a technology piece which is affordable. Affordable. It's too hard. It's like a delta problem, or a, that's the problem that you want to solve as an engineer. Yeah. Fast motorcycles, I think, easy. <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, the way you put it, yeah, that perspective makes a lot of sense. Now, I wanted to know more about Mr. Shelke. Okay. And I wanted to just put you in some spots. I'm gonna ask you rapid-fire questions, and uh, maybe uh, just let yeah. us know quickly. Rice or roti? Roti. Veg, non-veg. Veg. You're vegetarian. Yeah. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Honda or Yamaha? Both. Both. <laughs> Lamborghini or Ferrari? Actually both. I can't. <laughs> I can't choose between. <laughs> car. <laughs> Lamborghini, let's say. Yeah, I love. I like like the car. Yeah. Naked or fair bikes? Personally, naked. Naked. Yeah, it feels more like motorcycle. Naturally aspirated or forced induction? Forced induction. <laughs> Kratos X or Kratos R? I like the R more. The R is more like a subtle uh, uh, motorcycle you can ride daily. The Kratos is like a hooligan. Oh, looking forward. Oh, I, I'm I'm not supposed to say all this. Yeah. <laughs> Second last question: Entrepreneur or engineer? Engineer. Always. Yeah. From heart. Yeah, engineer. 
And last question, have you subscribed to the Driver Hub? Yes, last night. We got it, boys. Well, it has been an absolutely insightful, very insightful uh, conversation. I've had a lot of fun and I've learned a lot. Thank you so much for giving me the time to come and spend some time with you, having a nice ride, getting to know the bike because I had a lot of fun. And yeah, like I would love to keep in touch with you and thank you. Stay subscribed. Thank you. Love this. <laughs>